Hey everyone, and welcome back to my next Kree Above and Beyond episode. Let's jump into it. So to begin, uh, I hope the echo is not as bad. Uh, you probably don't see it, but I bought a lot of rugs and things to put into this apartment that's supposed to stop the echo. I can still hear it, so I apologize. I'll still have the music in the background. Hopefully that kind of helps it out. Uh, but I apologize for the next couple of videos. It's probably gonna have a little bit of an echo, so apologies. Now, as far as this episode goes, uh, you'll see I have some extra chapters opened up here. This is something that we might dive into, and I'll explain that a little bit, bit or a little bit in a bit. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is create a very basic ME system, and I'm going to show you how to set up an automated power source using lava, uh, kind of like what you would do back in the day. I know there's a bunch of different ways to create power and make it automated, uh, but let's go ahead and start with that. All right, so I'm coming over to this section that I've, I've done off camera. All this is, is I've found an area that has a very large lava source. Uh, you need over 10,000 source blocks for a liquid to be considered infinite. Uh, if you do have goggles on, which let me grab some. All right, so for our power source, I've gone into the nether. Now, uh, one key thing you need to do if you want to set up this system is one, you're going to need a lot of materials, so this is going to be kind of expensive. Uh, but you also need to find a lava source that is over 10,000 blocks. Now, a good way to check that is if you have a spout uh, or excuse me, a hose pulley, and you actually turn it on and it's put into a liquid, it will tell you if it's a bottomless supply. If it does tell you that, then you can see it says it's considered infinite, and that means you can constantly pull lava, this isn't going to drain it, and we're good to go. Um, all we're doing here is, uh, let's head over to this direction, is we have a windmill that's just built out with some sails connected to a windmill bearing. That uh, has a large cogwheel connected to that, which puts it into a speed controller, which we have set to, I believe that's negative 128, I believe. Uh, all that's doing is that this has 1,024 stress units, uh, so I'm increasing the speed as much as I possibly can to make it so I'm pulling as much lava as possible out of this system, uh, especially because this is the only thing I'm connected to go ahead and power, so I was able to do that much power just from a single windmill. Now, um, all I'm doing here is just pulling the power and connecting it to both the hose pulley. Um, one direction will pull the rope up, one will pull it down, we're pulling it down. Once it hits the ground, it'll actually start sucking the lava up. And then we just have a mechanical pump pumping it out of the hose pulley and placing it into an ender tank, which I'll go over in a second. Now, ender tanks uh, and this system, you need a chunk loader in order for it to work. There's, I think, two or three chunk loaders in this mod pack. I used the single chunk loader uh, with chunk no-go bye-bye, uh, which if you look at the materials is a little expensive, uh, but not as expensive as the other chunk loader, if I can find that, this one. Uh, to me, this was a little bit more expensive, uh, but I believe this one also works. Uh, I just went with this because you make 10 of them and I had ender pearls, so I just kind of said, you know what, might as well. But our, our key thing here is that we have an ender tank. Now, we're throwing this ender tank uh, or lava into the ender tank and we've set these colors to be white, blue, white. Uh, you set these colors holding a piece of dye and right clicking on one of these rectangles. And depending on the combination, that is how you're gonna transport to another ender tank, which I will show you right now. So we're back into the overworld and we can see we have another ender tank set right here to the exact same colors with a mechanical pump that's powered to pull the lava right into a bunch of fluid tanks. You can see we actually have a steady 100 or 128,000 MBs. Uh, still forget what that's called. I've just connected it to a single water wheel that is built with uh, soul sand and two two uh, water sources. You could probably do this just in the regular way that we've built water wheels throughout this entire series, but that's one option. There's also a single chunk loader here as well, uh, just so that this area stays powered uh, if I go ahead and run away. So lava is constantly going to be filled in here. Now let's take a moment to look at our ME system that we have created over here. Now, if you're not sure about the materials, I recommend just using just enough items. We've made all of the printed calculation circuits and into the processors and everything like that. And if you right click, you can see this is how we're gonna start making storage components, the crafting terminals, uh, practically everything that is made right here. So um, I'll go over it very basic. Uh, there are many tutorials online that go very deep into AE2, and I'm just showing a very basic one, because this is something that we're going to modify for our next chapter. But the gist of this is, is that you have an ME controller, which I believe that we created at the end of chapter four. Yep. So you take your ME controller, and you can, can put multiple of them around each other if you want to make this larger, but I've just used one. And you have your ME controller connected to an ME drive. You can connect it via these uh, AE2... Yeah, they're uh, Fluix ME covered cables. That's that's what I use. 
um, you could connect it or connect basically everything in the system via the cables, or if you just place it against a controller, it will interact. Uh, and you can see in this ME drive, uh, we have two 4K ME storage cells. This allows you to store either 63 different types of items or uh, the bytes, which is 4,096 bytes. I don't know if one item is equal to one byte. I, I could be wrong on that. Yeah, I don't think that's right because we have 172 oak planks in here, but that's kind of your storage. You can see we can store about like 120 types of items here. Not a lot. Uh, that's because these drives or are they called drives? The storage cells uh, get very, very expensive and there's many variations of them, but a very basic system that we have set up here that just has some planks in it is what we have going. Now, we've also taken these Fluix covered cables and connected it to a uh, interface terminal. A, uh, I believe this is a crafting terminal because it has crafting added into just sorting through the inventory and a pattern terminal as well, which I'll go over those in a second. Now, the ME controller needs some type of consistent power source, so you can just like attach a dynamo and hook up coal and it would kind of work. Uh, but when the coal runs out, your whole storage system runs out, so that could create some problems in uh, if you're trying to automate crafting recipes or anything like that. So that's where I've taken Invar Flux Ducts and I've put that connected to a magmatic dynamo uh, that just basically takes lava, creates power from that. So this is where you're probably seeing where I'm going with this. I'm pulling lava out of my tank, putting it into a magmatic dynamo, which is just constantly creating power, and it's outputting and placing it into the ME controller to go ahead and power my system. Now, I'm sure that if I make this system much larger, it would need more power. I probably just use multiple magmatic dynamos at that point, uh, but we haven't, we haven't gotten there just yet. Now, one huge thing that's a huge benefit to AE2 systems is the auto crafting aspect. And I've just created a, uh, a pattern in here that auto crafts crafting tables for me. Now that's very uh, non-unique. You can do that basically without a pattern very easily, uh, but I want to just kind of show that benefit here. So what you would need is you'd need blank patterns, which we've created a stack of them and you can leave them inside your pattern terminal. You would then take said item and just make a crafting recipe. You can see I've put four planks to make a crafting table and you would click encode pattern. Now I actually have a pattern right here. As you can see, it says crafting table. And if I pull this out, you can see it's a pattern and it's encoded with uh, creating one crafting table with four oak planks. Uh, so once you've made that pattern, you can put it into the interface terminal. Uh, if you if you have a molecular assembler. So let me show you on how that is set up. So the molecular assembler is this monstrosity over here. So I've just taken these cables, connected to a 1K crafting storage, and then to the crafting storage, there are a bunch of molecular assemblers all around an ME interface. So the interface allows you to use a crafting recipe, which will then be crafted inside of these molecular assemblers. Uh, I'm very new to this, so I've probably gotten a lot of that lingo incorrect, but uh, I'll link some tutorials down below in the description uh, involving AE2 systems. So if you wanna learn more about how to automate a lot more crazy stuff, which I assure that in this next chapter I will have to do, um, you can definitely watch those videos. But this is where all the crafting is happening. So you could throw your encoded patterns into here. Uh, by the way, if you have them in your inventory and you hold shift, it will show what item uh, is the thing that you're actually crafting. Once it's in there, that gives the crafting recipe to the molecular assembler that we have up running there. And then you can click on uh, any of your terminals, click on the crafting table and select how many you would like to make. So I can say, I wanna make, let's say 10. There you go. I can hit next. It's gonna say it's gonna take 40 planks to make crafting or 10 crafting tables. Uh, I already have 40 planks in the system, so we're good to go. I can hit start and you're gonna see it's gonna start crafting them and you can see the, for a very quick second, it made all 10 crafting tables inside of this molecular assembler. And now there's 10 crafting tables inside the terminal. Now you also have the ability to automate crafting recipe to crafting recipe to crafting recipe. Uh, you can get very complicated, especially creating things like these storage cells uh, to basically upgrade to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. You can get very complicated very quickly. Uh, we don't have to do... To, to my knowledge, there's no reason to do any automation with printed logic circuits or anything like that, which I don't even think you would be able to do really with these molecular assemblers, which is something that I believe you usually do uh, if you're just using the AE2 mod. So I think that was a very long way to explain AE2 uh, in a very short amount of time, if that made any sense. 
Uh, but we have our decision now to, to tackle two different things. We have Chaotic Alchemy, which is an alternative path, uh, which is essentially using that laser setup that we've messed with before to uh, kind of convert things into other things. We'll dive into that in a second. And then we also have the Divide by Digital, which is the finale chapter that we can dive into. Now, um, Chaotic Alchemy is kind of craziness. A lot of these I've realized this isn't an order. This is just like, oh, if you make this, congrats, you did this. Uh, and you can check off all these regions that you were able to make. But for our simplicity, um, we could dive into just kind of reading into this and seeing if it's worth it. Yes, I am going to skip this for now uh, because this is kind of like a you could test this if you wanted to kind of skip some parts in chapter four because it would open up a an entrance into here for silicon. So you could skip all this, but we've done all this. Uh, and this is something that is very the same for everyone's world as opposed to mine. But let me know if you want to go ahead and see that in the next episode. So that means that we're going to dive into divide by digital. And from what I understand, we're essentially building a calculator. Uh, I've, I've had to do this in coding and sometimes it's not fun. So I, I can only imagine what this is going to be like. Let me go ahead and read through this. All right. So step one is setup. Again, I, I got to say, Create Mod Developers, this is the most unique setups I've ever found in my life. Uh, all this is, is I'm literally just underground transporting logs from basically every machine we've ever made where we had a log farm, because you just need a bunch of items that are consistent that you no longer need. Uh, and since it's been literally months to be on this mod pack, I have plenty of logs to use. So all this is, is that we have a matter condenser that has an andesite funnel, basically putting the items in here. And then there's an output to go into a chest here. Now. Uh, what you need to do in this matter condenser is you need to click on this until it says that it's going to condense into matter walls. I believe you also have singularities that you could create, but we're trying to do the matter walls. Uh, and you need 256 items um, to basically go ahead and create a single, a single matter ball here. So uh, over here, we have our 1k ME storage component that you need to throw into here. And then once this hits 256, it should go ahead and create a matter ball for us. Uh, I'm wondering if I speed this system up, if this would help our situation. So let's let's look at that. All right, I did speed it up. It does look like it's going a little bit faster. So if you can speed up the belts or the input of set items, that definitely helps in this situation. Uh, but now we'll just wait until this hits 256. There we go. That was super fast, but there's a matter ball. We did it. All right, quick little thing, just in case you are like me and you're trying to figure out why things aren't working. Uh, so the finale starts at the bottom. You have to read this and hit this and collect your T before it opens up all the other sections because there's now four different entrances and all of it's going to come together to create this finale. We're going to start with this uh, matter ball situation and then hopefully we can get to this rocket guidance coordinator, I think. Uh, maybe not. I think, we, I think we will be able to get close to it. Um, but we're definitely not going to have the computation matrix because that is going to be created with the, all of this lovely number stuff. Uh, but let's go ahead and focus on getting this area created. Uh, then maybe we can focus on doing the liquids. And then finally, we we'll focus on the numbers that I know is going to be not fun. All right, so our next situation is a little bit tricky. Uh, there isn't necessarily a way to automate this. Now, there there is. Uh, if you go ahead and get an automated amount of silver coins, you could use a trade station to automatically create blaze cakes, and then you have an infinite amount of blaze cakes. That That's 100% an option. Uh, what I did, because I have automated lava, and I can get eggs, sugar, and cinder flour fairly easy. If you don't know what cinder flour is, it's netherrack that's gone through a crushing wheel, so pretty easy. Uh, I just made some of my own blaze cakes, uh, and, and that's how I'm going to do this. But you can automate this if you have a trade station silver coin automation factory. Again, maybe I'll do a video on that in uh, maybe in the next video, uh, but we'll we'll see. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do something like that. Uh, but all we need to do here is take our matter balls. We need to put them into a basin, which we can throw these guys into here. And then we need to have a blaze cake be placed on a blaze burner with a basin and a press that's automated on top. So if we click this, it will press and it's going to turn into matter plastics. And I think the quest line was like a very expensive brick uh, or expensive bricks too. Uh, and then now that we've created that, we should be able to go on to the next machinery. All right, let's start with our spacesuit. Uh, you're going to need iron leggings, iron boots, a copper back tank, a diving helmet. The copper back tank doesn't need to be powered. Uh, I think I made one of these in like the first or second episode. I, I could be wrong on that, uh, but doesn't need to be powered. 
You're gonna need eight golden sheets and eight of the matter plastics. And then you're gonna need a mechanical crafter set up in this formation. Uh, I just have it outputting uh, to nowhere right here because we don't need nothing too fancy. Uh, you'll place a piece of armor in, then you're gonna place, uh, I think we're gonna have to separate these out, I believe. Uh, matter plastics, matter plastics, golden sheet, golden sheet. It will craft. That will turn into the space boots. We can do the leggings. That will turn into space leggings. We can do the back tank. That will turn into a spacesuit chest piece. And then we can do the diving helmet. It's going to turn into the space helmet, as we can see right there. So we might as well throw it all on. Look at that. We are finally, we're finally in attire. Now, I have taken this off for the time being, uh, just because I don't want all of that over my screen. But our next steps, if I just get these guys off is gonna be uh, basically our entire launch pad. So let's go ahead and work on that. All right, so I think every time I say things are gonna be easy, it ends up not being easy, <laughs> but uh, what we're working on right here is this electrolysis, electro, uh, electrolysis, I think I butchered that, which is basically you have a gas charge pad that takes your spacesuit, charges it up with oxygen, uh, and in order to charge it with oxygen, you need tanks of oxygen. Now, tanks of oxygen are uh, basically taking oxygen, filling it with a spout equals tanks of oxygen. There's some other odds and ends, but I think this is the easiest way to do it. Uh, and then oxygen, you're created with copper sheets, zinc sheets, and water, which will then output oxygen, hydrogen, copper sheet, and zinc sheet. Uh, a lot of outputs here. So uh, one thing to keep notice is that copper sheets and zinc sheets are just gonna be able to be universal. So we're just gonna create a circle to just keep going around. You need it to be a heated blaze burner, so you just need logs, something flammable. Uh, not blaze cakes, you don't need superheated, so just something flammable. Uh, it creates oxygen, but it's only creating 50, so keep that in mind. And it is creating hydrogen, which is 50, but hydrogen, you can also do the exact same process of uh, outputting it. So if you just have extra buckets, you can get rid of it out of your system fairly easily. Now, uh, the thing we have to notice is that you need a thousand oxygen to create one tank of oxygen. So. That is something to keep in mind if you're not gonna do my automated process is that this is not a one to one ratio. This is about a 20 to one ratio. So uh, this has to process 20 times before it's actually gonna create one thing of oxygen. And we need four of them for this quest. So to set up this system, I just have a mixer with a basin with a blaze burner underneath. And then uh, <laughs> I have to get off of this. We have this output. This is just for the items because the spout area will automatically just put the out, the items outward. So we can throw down our copper sheet and our zinc sheet into here. And then every time it mixes, it will put the sheets back here, put them back into the system, and we should be good to go. Now, what we're doing over on the other direction is we have a smart fluid pipe here. And then this is set to the filter of a water bucket in deny mode. So it's gonna deny the water from leaving this basin. And speaking of water, we can right click with a bucket right here to place our water inside the machine. Now, this is gonna go ahead and pull out any liquid that's not water, pull it out and place it into our spout. So it's gonna pull the oxygen and the hydrogen. Now what's really cool, the way the pipes work is that if this just continues to keep mixing, keep mixing, keep mixing, it's either gonna pick hydrogen or oxygen to go first and it will output all of one liquid first prior to the other one. So you're not gonna have like oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen throughout the pipes. It will just do one and then the other. Apologize for banging the mic there. So uh, now that we've done that, all we have to do is just power up our blaze burner real quick. You're going to see it's going to start mixing. Uh, it's going to start putting some liquids through here. You can see that this uh, right now it's set to a thousand is now starting to fill with oxygen. So it's done a hundred so far. It's going to keep mixing. Uh, and eventually this will just keep adding up until a thousand. So you're going to see that this is now up to 200. So even though it has made hydrogen, the hydrogen is sitting inside here. The water is staying in there, the oxygen is getting pulled out first, and then once the oxygen has fully been processed, uh, then it will actually go ahead and start with the hydrogen, which is really cool. So what we're going to do is place our bucket here. So once this hits 1000, it will go ahead and make our uh, make our oxygen for us. Uh, if your system does stop, just remember, just add some more water to the system. You can also put some more logs on the blaze burner just to go ahead and give it more power, and we'll just continue to wait. And there we go. A take of oxygen. So now to pull the hydrogen out of the system, we'll just put down another bucket. This is gonna very quickly fill to the thousand and that will turn to our hydrogen. And now we just have to repeat the system three more times. All right, so now to basically power up our gas charge pad, we're gonna go ahead and click into this, take our oxygen, put that in there. It's gonna give us our buckets back, which is really nice. 
put down 4,000 uh, MBs of oxygen. I don't know how much we're gonna need here, but if we put all of our spacesuit on and then step onto here, it should fill up with oxygen, just like that. So we now have our oxygen inside of our suit. All right, next step was to build a launch pad and I've gone a little bit more design-like for this. Uh, literally with stone. Uh, all it is is you need to put down a rocket assembling machine and then you need to build a five by five structure made out of rocketry launch pads. Uh, just make sure this is in the center. This needs to be one block higher and off to the side for the assembly machine. Uh, and it'll say rocket unscanned if it's been created uh, successfully. And then this is a six high tall rocketry launch tower of just blocks. And this will start at the exact same level of the rocketry launch pad. And this allows us to start designing our rocket. All right, we're back. And uh, as you can see, a lot's been constructed, but I kind of did this on purpose uh, so that I can explain how everything, whoop, hit my mic again, explain how everything is working. So uh, let's start here. This is the section that we were working on uh, because we made our spacesuit. Uh, I showed you how to basically charge up a jetpack, uh, or I guess a jetpack, charge up your spacesuit. And the next three steps here, this is all about creating uh, your rocket ship, creating the launch pad, creating all of that, which I did show you the beginnings of that. So once you have this platform and you have the towers in place and you have this rocket assembly machine, it's now time for you to design your rocket. So you're gonna start out with four rocket thrusters, just in kind of this like diamond T shape style. Uh, and then once you place all four of those, you're then gonna place one rocket fuel tank on the back, two on the left side, two on the right side, and there should be, yeah, one right in the center. So that's how you place them. If you don't know how to place this entire machine, by the way, you can either watch the video or if you go into your quests and then uh, launch pad structure, if you type C Ponder Advanced Rocketry Guidance Computer, so that's C Ponder Advanced Rocketry Guidance Computer, it'll actually show a whole ponder thing of how to actually set up the entirety of this machine. But I'm just going over it really quickly for people that want to see it in the video. Uh, this is the rocket guidance computer. You're going to place that right in front. Uh, then the last thing you need to do is place a seat in the center. Now, this is not just any seat. The seat that you're looking for is a rocket seat. Uh, I just put down a random seat and it didn't work. So make sure you build the rocket seat. You can see you need a smithing table. It's the plastics matter and any type of seat. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. And then the rest of it is just design. So all this glass, the uh, smooth stone, the polished andesite stairs, things like that, all up to you. You can design it as big, small as you would like. I think there is some type of uh, some type of contradiction, contradiction, some type of stipulations on size, and I believe that it would need to be smaller than this launch pad. But correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't launched the rocket yet, so I don't I don't know. But this is how I've designed mine. Uh, one other thing you could do is place down a rocket fueling station, which I have not hooked up to the rocket itself yet, but this is where this whole madness ensues. Uh, so essentially, at this point, we have completed all of this except this pipeless loading station. Uh, that's something that deals with fueling the rocket, but you need to kind of build this setup over here before you can do that. Uh, so this whole entire area, the black gold to hydrocarbon sorter one, hydrocarbon sorter two to hydrocarbon sorter three is all of this craziness. To get started though, you need crude oil, uh, which you can actually find around the maps, typically in deserts. For me, I had to explore practically the entire map, but uh, let, me, let me go ahead and show you guys what it looks like. There you go. So this is what one looks like. It's usually filled with dark scoria cobblestone. And then this is the oil. You can just use a bucket to go ahead and pick it up. Uh, I'd probably recommend maybe building your rocket ship nearby to one of these things, which looking back on it probably would have made sense, but I'm vastly far away uh, from where I was to find this stuff. Uh, and usually you could find them almost shaped in like fountains uh, with a pretty good amount of oil. And it usually goes pretty far into the ground too. So you can get a, a pretty good amount of it. Uh, but yeah, there you go, oil. Now, once you have your oil, I'm gonna take this off. Uh, you got to do a couple different things to turn it into rocket fuel. The first thing is that you need to power up both the rocket assembly machine and the rocket fueling station. You can see there's power on the right side as opposed to the fuel that we're going to load on the left side. Uh, I've just done the same situation, Invar flux ducts to a magmatic dynamo, to a mechanical pump, and then to an ender tank that's just pulling from the exact same lava source, and we're still good because it's infinite. Uh, as far as that, that's literally just connected into the bottom of the rocket fueling station and the rocket assembling machine via the Invar flux ducts. 
this pipe up top is where we're doing all of our conversions. So all this is right here is this is pulling our rocket fuel once we've created it out of the tank. That's where the rocket fuel is first going in. Now to start this system, uh, we have to use two fractioning stills. Uh, and the fractioning still, the first one is going to take in our crude oil. And then that's going to turn into either uh, heavy oil or it's going to turn into light oil. What's good for us is both heavy oil and light oil can be converted into refined fuel, which is exactly what we need. So it doesn't really matter which one it creates. The one thing to keep note of, though, is that if you look at your heavy fuel and you're using the fractioning still, uh, it can give you bit bitumen. I believe that's what it's called. And then also light oil does the exact same thing. Now, there is one more thing to kind of keep in mind. And also you can see that if you have heavy oil or light oil, it's either going to create sulfur dust or it's going to create tar. And that happens in the second thing. So to account for that, all we have uh, all we have up and running is just andesite funnels placed on belts that are automatically pulling the items off and putting them into our large chest here. So uh, just keep that in mind so your machine doesn't like stop working. Uh, and all we have to do now is literally just put crude oil into our first machine, which I'll just put a bunch of it in. Uh, keep in mind, one bucket of crude oil is not enough to produce uh, to produce rocket fuel for us. Uh, you need several buckets, so uh, a good amount of it is definitely encouraged. You're going to see it's automatically been starting to transfer into here, where we have some heavy oil in here, and it's starting to convert. So we'll give that a second. And really quickly, you saw for a very split second, uh, rocket fuel was right inside here. And that has just been pulled into a fluid tank right here, which you can see we have about 18,000 in here, which it's been going for a while off camera. And that is automatically being pulled and placed into our fueling station, which is currently at the max. So now that we have both of these sections up and running, uh, we have a couple last parts to do. One is to actually take our machine and convert it to a rocket and then put the fuel into it. But I think I'm going to pause on that and we're gonna start working towards our essentially calculator that we're gonna be building. All right, so to begin, all we have done here is taken a magma crucible. We have our calculation mechanisms going in here and turning into liquefied logic. Uh, we have, once again, have a lot of these guys because I think it's been a couple weeks in real life since, uh, since officially we got the calculation mechanisms up and running, but it'll slow down pretty drastically pretty soon. Um, we're pulling it via an ender chest. This just allows you to have one ender chest and another ender chest and transfer items. So exactly how we're doing the lava situation that I explained in the beginning of this video, that but with items. Uh, and we're doing the exact same lava situation to just power this magma crucible because I have a feeling in this series of this entire mechanism, I'm probably going to need to power more machines with this power. So I just pulled it over here as well. Um, but now we got to go ahead and do something with this liquid. So I've hopped back in and I've decided that this is where I'm going to actually end this episode because uh, diving into that whole math situation, I think is going to make it a very, very, very long episode. And then basically, once we finish that, we're going to space. So uh, I think I'm going to save that for the next episode should release in at most another week from now, if not a little less than that, depending on time and stuff like that. But uh, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys all in the next one.